Recently, Gaijin added a new squadron vehicle to War Thunder. This was the A4E Early, an upgraded variant of the Skyhawk we already have in game. So what just is the difference between the B and the E variant? Well, the latter is a little bit heavier, but for that way, you get an upgraded engine, a higher top speed, and additional hard points, giving you an absolutely insane amount of ordnance to carry. Alright lads, today I'm going to be talking about the weapons performance of the A4E Skyhawk. Starting as always with the basics, this vehicle is a rank 6 battery rating 9.0 attacker located in the American tech tree. Being a rank 6 squadron vehicle, it will come stock and will have to be upgraded to unlock its full potential. It will also only be effective at researching other vehicles between the ranks of 5 and 6. To unlock this plane, you will have to grind out 380,000 squadron points which will take several months, or alternatively, purchase the jet straight up for a price of 6,800 golden eagles. Regardless of how you get this plane, as I said, it will come stock, and as this is a squadron vehicle, it is not a premium. You will not get any additional reward modifiers for this plane. Before we go any further, if you only take one piece of information away from this video, it is that the A4E is pretty bad in the current meta of Aerialistic. Again, do not buy or grind this jet if you want a good dogfighter. If you stick around for the rest of this video, then you'll see where this plane truly shines is in its closer support role. Getting back on track, after purchasing the plane, you will then have to add it to your lineup for a cost of 280,000 silver lions. Pretty steep for a vehicle you just spent months grinding. You can then additionally purchase the expert and ace qualifications for the jet, costing 990,000 silver lions and 2,200 golden eagles respectively. You also have a fairly cheap repair cost of 7,513 silver lions, but as this jet truly is a monster in combined battles, possibly even being better than the infamous G91R3, I imagine this repair cost will skyrocket in the coming months. Going on to the rewards, and the vehicle has a base RP modifier of 2.14, which gives you an RP modifier of 214% with a free to play account, and 428% with a premium account. Your base silver line modifier of 2.1 is pretty high for a battery rating 9.0 jet, and it should offset any future repair cost increases. You can expect a silver line modifier of 210% with a free to play account, and 315% with a premium account. The A4E also has quite a few camouflages available to purchase. While the A4E was classified as a major upgrade to the real-life Skyhawk, does its increased payload really justify such a large grind, and or price tag? Stick around for the rest of the video to find out. Starting with the engine and flight characteristics, and the A4E receives an upgraded engine compared to the B variant. The new Pratt & Whitney J52 produces 3470kg of thrust, an improvement of 270kg over the previous engine. While this engine was more modern than the older Wright engine in the B variant, the Pratt & Whitney still lacked an afterburner, which does limit your rate of acceleration compared to some of the other jets around battery rating 9.0. As well as a mediocre acceleration, you also have a rather poor climb rate of 40 meters per second with clean wings, and when carrying 5 ground attack missiles, that drops down to just below 15 meters per second. Needless to say, the A4E isn't going to be a very good dogfighter, it just doesn't have the acceleration or climb rate to carry out aerial combat manoeuvres. But what about the speed of the jet? Well at sea level, you will max out at 1081 km per hour. This is subsonic, and due to the aforementioned poor acceleration, it does take a while to achieve this top speed. Due to the plane being designed as an attacker, the plane was never meant for high altitude performance. This results in the top speed of the plane being achieved at sea level, rather than at high altitude. This again limits the usefulness of the A4E as a fighter, as you don't have the high altitude speed or power to fight opponents such as the MiG-17. So the A4E can't run or climb, but can it turn? Well no, not really. While the initial turn rate is quite good, mainly due to the presence of leading edge slats, after around a turn of 180 degrees, you'll have pretty much bled all of your energy, and as your engine acceleration isn't very good, you cannot easily regain that lost energy. This pretty much kills your ability to both turn fight, as well as reverse enemies, as the majority of the jets will face will simply just go vertical, and then just boom and zoom you, draining your energy, before essentially mercy killing you. There is one way in which this jet differs from the planes around it at a similar battle rating, and that is the addition of flur pods. This gives you an added advantage, mainly due to the fact that you no longer need to furiously evade incoming missiles. You can do a few rolls and pop flurs, and that should throw off any incoming IR guided missiles. This is a great addition, and something that is desperately needed to give you at least a decent chance of surviving more heavily armed opponents. Overall, as I said in the introduction, this plane is not meant for dogfighting. It is pretty much confined to a role of closer supporting ground attack, while as we'll see shortly, the plane does get a range of air to air loadouts. I feel like trying to play this jet as an air superiority fighter is pretty dumb. The plane just doesn't have the performance, and to be honest, there are much better dogfighters in the American tech tree.
Moving on to the weapons, and to start, the A4E does not get access to either radar or a ballistic computer. This series will limit your accuracy with both bombs and rockets. Instead of a reticle showing you the impact point, found on points such as the F4 Phantom and MiG-21s, you will be left having to manually eyeball the shots in. So let's hope you got some good practice destroying Veraboos with the P-47s back in the day. The A4 stock weapon are a pair of Browning Mark 12 20mm cannons. This is a pretty typical weapon load after the American Tech Tree at battery rating 9.0, and the same guns as found on the previous B variant of the Skyhawk. So thankfully, you won't have to learn to lead new guns. From my experience with them, they hit incredibly hard, making them effective against both AI ground targets and enemy players. These cannons are located in the wing groups, at a similar level to the nose of the plane, making aiming the guns rather intuitive. You don't have the awkwardness of belly mounted cannons such as the MiG-21 or Hunters. These cannons each have 100 rounds of ammunition and have a fire rate of 1000 rounds per minute. While the guns do hit incredibly hard, you will have to be very accurate with your shots. Probably the biggest change that came with the A4E variant was the addition of two extra hardpoints, one on either wing, giving you a total of five, compared to the A4B's three hardpoints. These two extra hardpoints allow you to carry more of the excellent ground attack weapons the Americans have access to, even allowing you to carry up to five of the monstrous AGM-12B bullpups. But we'll start with the most basic type of weapon, the good old fashioned dumb bombs, of which the A4E can carry four different variants. The 250 pound bomb with an explosive radius of 5 meters, the 500 pound bomb with an explosive radius of 8 meters, we also have 1000 pound bombs which will annihilate a tank within 30 meters, and finally you get access to a 2000 pound bomb which will send any vehicle within a 20 meter radius back to the hangar. All of these bombs can be carried in several payload options, on their own, or with other types of weapons we'll cover shortly. Luckily for all you closer support players, the AGM 12B bullpup missiles are a rank 1 unlock meaning you can spread cancer in top tier battles incredibly quickly. As you all know, the bullpups are the nastier cousins of the already infamous Nords carried by the German G91. Whereas the Nords carry 24kg of TNT, the bullpups carry a staggering 63.5kg of explosive filler, giving you 93mm of penetration, as well as a ridiculous kill radius on lightly armoured targets. Like the Nords, the bullpups can be manually guided onto a target, further increasing their lethality. The next rockets you get access to are the god old American Mighty Mouse unguided rockets. As I mentioned earlier, the Skyhawk doesn't get a ballistic computer, so you will have to resort to spamming these missiles at an enemy target and praying to create an Abrams that you actually hit something. The rockets themselves have 290mm of penetration and travel at 701m per second, making them relatively easy to aim compared to some of the other rockets in game. In the name of spreading freedom and democracy, America designed a more impressive Zuni rocket, basically an upgrade over the Mighty Mouse in every way, boasting a higher max speed of 722m per second, as well as 557mm of penetration. The choice of using Zuni rockets over the Mighty Mouse seems obvious, but there is one downside, and that is the size. The A4E can only carry a maximum of 36 Zuni rockets, compared to a staggering 171 individual Mighty Mouse rockets. As I mentioned in the engine section, the A4E can also carry some anti-aircraft weapons, of which you'll have two choices. The first is the old meme missile, the AM-9B itself, well known for being basically useless. It serves more as a denial weapon, denying the enemy the ability to fly straight after fighting you. While it's great for killing window lickers that don't know how to check their sixth, against an opponent paying attention, you will struggle to get kills with these missiles. The AM-9B itself is a rear aspect infrared guided missile, meaning it follows the heat signature of an enemy. They also have a pretty poor 10 Gs of maximum overload. And finally, if you really want to make yourself suffer, you can take out the gun pods on this jet. These gun pods contain the Mark 11 20mm cannon, and they fire the same rounds as your internally mounted cannons. They have the exact same fire rate and velocity, and you can carry these gun pods with additional armament, or go full balls to the walls and carry 3 gun pods, giving you a total of 5 20mm cannons. These are pretty good for going head on, but only a dumb enemy is going to commit. In most games, these gun pods will simply serve as a huge source of drag. Overall, the A4E has an incredible amount of ordnance available to carry. This creates a plane that is both powerful and versatile. While the jet does have some serious shortcomings when it comes to air to air engagements, it redeems itself with the sheer amount of closer support capabilities on offer. Because this plane doesn't have an afterburner, you can get away running minimum fuel. Besides, you aren't going to last that long in an air RB match anyway, and all it will do is add more weight to your already underpowered airframe. Being an attacker, you do get an air spawn, spawning you at full speed, relatively close to enemy ground targets. This allows you to get a few easy AI kills, or alternatively, you can use your head start to try and harass the enemy players taking off. This is a little bit scummy, but your aircraft isn't really a fighter as I've mentioned and without the support of your own team, who will still be taking off themselves, you will almost certainly get swamped by enemy Harriers or afterburning enemies such as the Swift F7. If you are playing realistic, 
I'd take bombs for destroying mini bases, the 171 Mighty Mouse rockets for killing small AI targets such as pillboxes. And if you really want to scar yourself trying to play this thing as a fighter, I'd recommend taking either the two single AM9Bs or the AM9Bs in the single gun pod. But where this jet truly shines is a closer support role in combined battles. Here, you can take any weapon you'd like and it'd still be relatively deadly on the battlefield. Personally, I take the five bullpup earth to ground missiles. With a bit of practice in clear skies, it is pretty much five easy kills. And with the bullpups being a rank one modification, you get access to them basically straight away. You can also carry several different combinations of weapons that are effective in combined arms. The choice of 114 Mighty Mouse rockets and the six 500 pound bombs is incredibly flexible, giving you six individual bomb drops and a shitload of rockets to spam at anyone unlucky enough for you to spot. But as the A4E is subsonic, and relatively heavy with a full load, just be very aware of self-propelled anti-aircraft guns. Both the battle rating 8.0 radar guns and the battle rating 10.3 radar missile weapon systems can easily maul you if you let your guard down, so try to stay low and fast and using the terrain to mask your approach and exit. To conclude, the A4E Skyhawk is an absolutely incredible close air support weapon, arguably overtaking the German G91 in its effectiveness. Its wide variety of weapons gives you the flexibility to perform several roles on the battlefield. You can take bombs and rockets for dealing with ground targets, bullpups for more manual destruction, and can even clear the skies of incoming attackers with your missile and gun loadouts. And the best part about this jet is that due to you having 5 hardpoints, you can now bring along a mixture of both air to air and air to ground weaponry. But the plane does have plenty of negatives. I've spoke quite a lot about how the plane isn't a great dogfighter with other battle rating 9.0 jets, but this plane shouldn't be bought or grounded for anything other than combined arms battles. Another negative is the fact that this plane will come stock, making it rather hard to grind out due to having poor air to air performance. I'd recommend unlocking either the bullpups or a bomb loadout and then doing some ground pounding in ERB or combined battles. Personally, I'm not really convinced that this jet is worth nearly 7,000 Golden Eagles for those considering buying it outright, but people thinking about grinding it via the squadron points, I'd fully recommend getting this jet. In my opinion, the A4E is far more effective vehicle than the BMP-2M, the other top tier squadron award vehicle. The A4E itself is incredibly powerful on the battlefield and goes very well alongside the XM-1. I've used this jet substantially at battery rating 9.0 as well as battery rating 10.7 and it's just as effective alongside the M1A2 Abrams as it is alongside the XM1. It's important to remember that this is just my opinion. What do you guys think of this cast monster? If you have any questions, criticism, positive or negative or even like to request a review, please feel free to leave a comment below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if I did my job correctly, hopefully you should have learned something new about this jet. If you do enjoy these sorts of videos, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing. But more importantly lads, I hope you have a great day and thank you very much for watching.